Hello, everyone. I'm Jen Rogers in New York, and this is the final round. Stocks blasting off here, rebounding from the worst week for the market since the financial crisis. And I'm Miles Edlin. This is Dow Blue Chips like Apple, Walmart, and Boeing lead the way higher despite coronavirus cases spiking outside of China and right here in the U.S. We'll have more on that coming up in just a bit. Plus, Deutsche Bank's chief economist Torsten Slock on the coronavirus effect and the U.S. economy and when the Fed will act. He's here. And Wall Street weighing in on Twitter with CEO Jack Dorsey in the hot seat. It's our call of the day. Plus the Atlantic's Dr. James Hamblin on his must-read article, You're Likely to Get the Coronavirus, and whether the U.S. is doing enough to contain an outbreak. With us now, Yahoo Finance's Heidi Chung and, as promised, Deutsche Bank Securities Chief Economist Torsten Slock to talk about all of today's market action. And as you can see, we've got big green arrows there. Stocks rebounding from the worst week on Wall Street since the financial crisis. Dow is looking at its best day in 14 months. S&P is having its single best day since last August. Uh, meanwhile, Treasury yields continue to have a historic action here, hitting new lows yet again. So, Miles, we're, we're finally getting this bounce that we mm -hmm. talked about, we thought we were going to get it last Tuesday. Mm -hmm. I think that was the day <laughs> we thought, okay, we had a big sell-off on Wednesday, on Monday. When well, you it's had right that, in the, it's right in the name, Turnaround Tuesday. Yeah, Turnaround so Tuesday. We were higher, waiting. This say. one's like four days late. Yeah. Four trading days late. Is, yeah. So now there's all this talk about, is this the bottom? I know you don't know the answer. No, I don't. But what are, Unfortunately, but what, I don't. <laughs> but what are people saying? <laughs> Um, I, I still think, in, as you look back on this sell-off, which we're still in a corrective phase in this market, um, the speed with which everyone said, you got to buy the dip, don't worry, like market's going to come back, still kind of amazes me. And we ended up going down 11% in one week, basically, because the entire consensus was, well, the market can't go down that much. So I don't really think that one day, and you know, as Sam Rowe wrote in the, uh, the morning brief this morning for Yahoo Finance readers, like, the market has its biggest rallies in the middle of these kinds of phases. And I think if you wanted as a bull to say, oh, well, I wanted to see a 4% pop on the market, you're actually disappointed today because you, you know, you're 180 basis points away from that target anyway. And so um, I think we have a long way to go here before anyone who's at least looking at the equity side can get excited about what they're seeing. And we are off the highs of the session. On the Dow, we're up more than 800 points. So we've come back from there. So Torsten, as Miles just noted, we're in this corrective phase. How long, when you start to get these spikes in volatility, what does history tell us for how long this can stick around for? Well, it's about focusing on what stories are being told. And what is the story being told today? Well, there's a lot of attention going to the fact that both in Singapore and China, it looks like, at least that's a narrative, that things are getting better in those areas is where many of these problems started. And if that's the case, then we're already seeing improvements in many places in Asia. Asia is going back to work, is the narrative. Well, the market is then latching onto that. And will we continue to latch onto that? Or will it be outweighed by the numbers here in the US, where we still see now cases coming in places that are new relative to what we heard in the stories last week? But Torsten, we were talking about this a little bit outside. But your base case scenario is way more pain for the markets, right? Down some 20, 30 percent from the recent highs. So why do you think that at this point? So we still think that we will get these stories in between where things are looking a little bit better and the market says, well, maybe there's something to hang on to here and hang your hat on the view that maybe that we should take some consolation from Asia doing better. But generally speaking, we're still quite worried that there's a number of issues that one can worry about, namely what will it mean, of course, for the economic indicators. This week we get non farm payrolls, ISM. We will not get any indication from these numbers in terms of what actually happened last week. So we're still really flying in the dark from a macroeconomic perspective. And that's why the central banks and the G7 meeting tomorrow is so important because they are now thinking hard about what can they do to try to calm things down. Mm -hmm. Well, and when you look at, you know, one of the members of the G7, the U.S. doesn't really seem to have any plan in place. How much does that change the model as well? Because, you know, okay, great. We might have, you know, the French government, the German government saying we're ready to step in. But, you know, on the tape today, you've got uh, uh, no progress on middle class tax cuts, but maybe in November. It'll be a campaign talking point. Uh, it's a long way between, between now and then. That's why the burden squarely here falls on the Fed. And this is why everyone in the market immediately, as we've talked about for years, looks yeah. to the Fed and says, <laughs> wow, the Fed has to do something. And then you say, well, is this the best tool, interest rates? I mean, if you have very negative sentiment, if you have a lot of fear in the population, and in the household sector and the corporate sector, mm -hmm. lowering interest rates 25 basis points might not help that much. 